Hey guys, welcome to episode 133 of the Cat Lady Podcast. My name is Andrea, also known as the Cat Lady. That's two T's, C-A-T-T, -T, which stands for Craft All the Things. Thank you for joining me. I am a weekly podcast, vlog, whatever you want to call it, YouTuber that talks about knitting, uh, crochet, spinning, other fiber related, mostly fiber related crafts, as well as other random crafts that I decide I want to try and work on. Lately it's just been a lot of knitting. I'm also the owner of the Cat Lady Yarns, so I do have some hand dyed yarns that I will uh, talk about. And that's me in a nutshell. I am coming to you from Michigan with my two kids, husband, and two cats. I guess husband, two kids, two cats. Actually if you want to put it in the right order, two cats, husband, two kids. <laughs> so. That is me, and if you are new, thank you for checking me out. I hope you like what you see, and please like, subscribe, share, follow, whatever. And if you are returning, thank you so much, as always, for coming back and checking me out. I tend to ramble, but that's just is is who I is. So uh, with that, uh, you can find me on social media as the Cat Lady on Instagram, I have a Facebook group, and sometimes I TikTok, but I haven't done that in a while. And is that it? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you can find me, uh, you can email me at uh, thecatladydesigns at gmail.com or craftycatlady at gmail.com. I have a coffee account. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, it's uh, www.ko-fi.com slash thecatlady. And my website is www.thecatlady.com. Okay, all the formalities out of the way. Not a ton to share. There is, last week was super hectic with trying to get ready for the virtual festival that I did on Sunday, which was awesome. I'll talk about that. And the week before I had did, done an interview with Lady Bird Loves podcast. So yeah, the last couple of weeks have just been just like crazy. So this week I kind of just have been laying low. So not a ton, but you know, again, it is what it is. So I will jump right into the, my works in progress. I have two works in progress that if you've been following me, you've seen a ton, but I, each week I manage to get a little bit done on them. So let's see where I am now. I'm just dying to get this sweater done. I need to focus more time on it, but it's just, I feel like it's just going really slow. Like snag my, snag my. So this is my Seclude sweater by Alicia Plummer. And it is a v-neck. It's going to be for my mom. I finally joined the second ball of yarn, so that's a plus. But this is a v-neck sweater, and it's going to have uh, thumb holes in the sleeves, and it'll at the end it changes to a different color. So it'll be a light blue at the end for the sleeves. So I'm just plugging away on the body here, and then you pick up a neckline. You do an I cord neckline. Last I showed off, I was where this little marker is, so made a couple inches. So I'll just kind of sit and work on this usually when we're watching TV. But the problem is I've been obsessed with my other work in progress, <laughs> a little more so. So that one's getting more love, but I really need to work on this. So that's Seclude by Alicia Plummer, living in my Zelda bag. So what my, where my heart is at right now is the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart. And that is made with, oh that's, the sweater was with Karen Simply Soft, so just standard acrylic. But this is my Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart, which is a throw blanket. And this is using a Lollipop Girl Yarns in the Advent color, uh, Christmas, Advent Christmas set. And last you saw, I was at that marker, which is right there. So I've made it through one, two, I'm on my third color change since then. Um, I'm a little concerned about, uh, obviously it's on short needles, so I can't show the actual blanket size, but I'm on the decreases now. I just started the decreases around here. So let's see, last I showed was here, which was Mickey Fireworks. So we've gone on from Fireworks to Orange Bird, Pluto, or Goofy, and now we're on Winnie the Pooh. So they were all Disney, very Disney Christmas. 
very Mickey Christmas or something like that. Disney Christmas. Um, but I'm on the decreases. I started here around Goofy, which is only color 10. So that makes me a little nervous, but I follow the directions. I weighed my yarn. I'm about 45% through all my yarn, which is what they recommended. I might even, I might be more 40%. So I might be short or I might not get to every mini, I guess, but I'd like to use up, you know, I'd like to get to the end. But I guess if I don't, if I don't do the brown at the end, I don't care that much, but I also don't want it to be like two rows of brown at the end. Like, it probably will though. It's going to do something like that to me where it's going to be like, okay, I want, I would like it to be, you know, a large chunk at the end because there's a large chunk at this end, right? That's kind of like what I want. But knowing my luck, it's going to get down to here and I'm going to have to change color and it's going to be the tiny little corner of a different color, but that's fine. No one's going to notice. It's just going to be well, me and like, how else do you plan? Because each mini itself is going to be slightly different sized. Again, I'm going off a, you know, a scale that may not be, oh. well, I use two scales so to make sure, so it should be accurate, but I don't know. I don't know where, where, where this is going to go. So it is what it is. I'm not going to like rip it out and re-knit or anything to get it perfect. Um, it'll be fine. I just hope I don't have a t too much left over. I hope I, I do hope I make it through all the colors. Mostly. I hope I don't have a lot of leftovers. So but I might have a whole, I don't know, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we shall see. But this has been taking up most of my time because I really enjoy working on that. And now that I'm in the decreases, I feel like it's going to go faster because each of my rows are going to get smaller. So that is the habitation for row. And that is in my Eat, Sleep, Knit. Rhinebeck, virtual Rhinebeck bag from last year from Amy from Happy Little Yarn. So that's it. No finished objects, no other crafts. I, if you recall, I was working on my diamond dots for a while and I, you know, after the whole interview slash uh, virtual thing came up, I kind of just like put a halt on everything except for those two projects and I worked on dyeing yarn and so, you know, I haven't done any of my other crafts, but I have a little diamond dots that's like a wintry truck, is it a, yeah, it's like a truck carrying a, Christmas tree or something so obviously um, I should get back to that and finish that but it seems weird now because it's like we're in spring and now I don't know if I want to work on a winter themed project but I, I'm like almost halfway through it maybe so or eh, maybe like a third through it so I should work on that so up oh, well I guess needle adjacent I have lots of needle adjacent projects so I went okay well I was having some camera problems I thought I wasn't recording but I was recording but all my info was not showing so I didn't see the timestamp so I'm back anyways needle adjacent projects I uh, want to cast on the everyday slouchy beanie by dragon horn yarns and use it uses a fingering weight and a mohair and I'm testing out a mohair base that I bought for the shop it's super soft I love it so these are what I need to do. So I want to cast that on. So this is Cranberries After Dark. It's a one-off color, kind of one-of-a-kind color that's very similar to my Cranberries from Christmas. And then I have the same Cranberries After Dark as well on a worsted base that I still need to find a project for. So those I really need to get going because I want to... I mean, like, worsted I may not want to introduce to the shop until closer to winter anyways, or fall at this point, since we're now getting to more spring but uh, the mohair could be a good one to introduce next. Also, I am looking to design a new pattern called the Fraternal Twin. So I have two patterns I've designed. One of them, the first one was called the Twinsy Shawl. And I'd like to do another version of the Twinsy Shawl, but a slightly different construction. So I'm thinking of using one of my gradients, since I don't have any samples shop sample. So this is summer fun gradient. This is the one I burned. <laughs> so there is a knot in here that I will need to undo and, you know, weave in the ends, but it's, it was a very, very, very small section of yarn that came out, like literally like two inches, maybe tops. So it won't affect much of anything. <laughs> so, but when I was dyeing the gradient, I did two of them. One of them's actually, I have one in the shop. One's available right now. So, and it's caked up already. So you can see the gradient clearer. Um, but I did the two, they were on sock blanks. So I dyed up the blank and then I wrapped it in plastic wrap and I kind of set it 
on so like I tried to make a little foil table and one of them fell off and it burned the bottom of the pan a little so yeah that was not good but it is still function for a shop sample all uh, right so on to some stash I don't have a lot of stash but I do have something so I met up with a friend who made a yarn purchase she was at the virtual on Sunday and she won my door prize so she had a gift card to the shop so she made a purchase and of course I said well why don't we meet up so that you don't have to pay shipping so we met at a local yarn store which I haven't been inside a local yarn store since pandemic so it was nice to get out and see somebody and go into a yarn store and they had just moved to a new lo new location so that was cool so I hadn't seen their new store yet so I just you know I hadn't planned on buying anything of course who does but I guess some people do but I saw this and it was something somewhat unique it's not really new, unique but it's unique to me so this is Plymouth yarn Andy's sock so it is a fine merino 55% merino superwash and 20% alpaca and 25% nylon so I have not knit with alpaca at all except for once my very first sweater and it's the worst alpaca yarn ever it was Patton's touch of alpaca it was awful it's itchy as heck so I can't wear it very well um but this is not itchy this is very soft and this is a merino alpaca nylon so this will be a pair of socks maybe I will get in, inspired to knit some socks because I haven't knit socks in a while and this is in the vineyard mix so nice browns and wine colors so I, I thought it was pretty this will make a pair of socks and yeah, I thought they'd be really nice soft socks. So some alpaca sock. And that was, that's it. That's it for stash this week. So I've not bought anything. That's, uh, yeah, this is going to be super short today. But that's it for works, you know, crafty things I've been doing. Uh, life, life in review. Um, we finished up Battle of the Books. So I've been the mentor slash mentor, I guess mentor for Emily's battle of books team so that started uh they we started meeting i think in december so we met virtually it's all kids in the neighborhood that are friends with emily so it's a group of four of them so they had a really really fun time they didn't take it too seriously um so we just did a lot of chatting and talked about books but yesterday was the wrap-up party so that was a lot of fun it was at um it was put on by the library and it was over Zoom, but they actually had three of the authors of some of the books they read there. So they had the author of Becoming RBG, which Emily read, and they had the author of a book called Stuffed, and then they had another author of a book, a uh, book called My Life as a Book. So three of the authors were there, and they talked about their process and uh, the Becoming RBG. I, Debbie Levy, she got to interview Ruth and like see your chambers and it's like it was really cool so, and I enjoyed reading that book with Emily because it was a it was like a that was a deep book compared to all the other books that were in the list it was the only nonfiction book and it was like yeah it was like the story of Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life it was in a graphic novel form but it was there was a lot of information in there that it's like you know it was one that I had to talk to her about as it was going on because it was a lot of like court things and you know terms that were not you know they try to explain it as kid friendly as possible but it was still some of it was like a little over her head so um so we enjoyed reading that together but that's done thank goodness <laughs> i mean it was fun but i was like every week we were meeting and like i'm trying to encourage emily to study her book titles and stuff like that so i'm just I'm kind of glad we're done so uh in other life news we are currently in a semi-quarantine uh david's classroom I got an email yesterday that he was going to be quarantined, but it's only for two days because they're on spring break next week. So he is currently downstairs learning whatever they learn in third grade. So for today and tomorrow, he's home. Emily still gets to go to school. The kid in question hadn't been in school since last week, so we're all fine. Everyone's fine. They're just doing the following the protocols, which is which is fine. So and next week is spring break, so we I may not record we'll see we'll see well, maybe I'll have things to talk about I don't know so depends on what I get done but next week is our spring break we're just gonna be tooling around the house Jim's taking a couple days off uh, just at the beginning of the week and we're gonna try to just go on a hike or do some fun things at home so that's about it 
Uh, I got a new skateboard, so if you've <laughs> seen some, uh, a couple episodes back, I had a video of me uh, awkwardly skateboarding on one of my child's skateboards, which it's a, I got the same one, but it's uh, I'll put a picture of it. It's got a cool design on the back, but a cheap, cheap Amazon skateboard, but I tooled around in the garage a little bit yesterday, and it's fun. So we bought uh, some pads, uh, elbow pads, knee pads, and whatever, and I got a helmet, a uh, bike helmet, of course, so... Hopefully we're, this week we're going to play on skateboards too because I want to, it's fun, it is fun. So I actually want to clean up the basement a little bit too so I can kind of just, just practice getting on it really. So, and so that has been fun. Uh, and that's it for life. So hopefully next week, we'll, the weather's not going to be great. So hopefully next week's, hopefully we make the best of it, I guess. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to get some snacks and just play some video games and do that kind of thing too. So, and I'm going to do some knitting. Hopefully there'll be uh, just knitting day, sit and knit day. Um, so business, uh, if you didn't catch up with the virtual, I showed off all the new stuff that I have in the shop, but uh, I will show some of it off today as well. Uh, the replay is still on the virtual Facebook page. I posted it on my Facebook page, so you can go watch me blab on for 45 minutes about yarn. <laughs> So it's all stuff that if you follow me, you already know, except for the colors. So one thing I did not show off that I'm still debating is I have one skein of DK weight, orange spiny tail lizard, and I was going to keep it for myself. So technically it is not listed. I'm still debating if I should just list it. So if you are interested in one skein of a DK weight, orange spiny tail lizard, let me know. I'd be willing to part with it. I like it. I want to do. I would do something with it, but I just I feel like I have so many projects on my list that maybe I should just throw it in the shop. But it was like a one-off skein, so I had the th four skeins of BFL, and I had I just had one. I was what was left soaking in my bins. I had one skein of DK left soaking, and I had four skeins of BFL. So I just threw it all in the pan and went to town. And it turned out really nice. I do like how that turned out. So orange spiny tail lizard on DK could be could be yours if you. Let me know. So the piece de resistance, which I don't know how many are left. Okay, I think this is it. I think I have two left. Is the Spring Fling mini set. So this is my Spring Fling mini set on BFL minis. So the BFL minis are 20 grams, which are about 72. Right down in here. 73 yards, 66 meters per mini. And there's six of them. So usually my mini sets have five, but this one has six. So I had like a happy accident. So here is my inspiration photo. Um, where is it? So typically I. I don't know, sometimes I have trouble, like some, typically I dye something and then I name it after. So that was what the, this was. I dyed this and then I name it after. Sometimes I come up with a name and then dye it with the colors, I think. So, I mean, there was just, there's so many different ways I do things. But this one, I just knew I wanted to call a mini set Spring Fling. That was just, that was my thing. I knew I wanted Spring Theme. I like Spring Flings, just sounds fun. I knew I wanted that. So I Googled the words Spring Fling and came up with an image search and came up with this. And I loved the colors. So I dyed up, and but this was only the four, so I wanted five. So I wrote down all the colors I planned on using. I threw some purples in there and kind of broke it up to make it kind of a fade. And so I started with this green one because the first color is like green and yellow. And then I went straight to this orangey red one because. Well, the next one, the next one is more yellow orange, but I was trying to incorporate the reds in there too. So I don't know. I just, I went straight to this yellow, red, red, orange, pink kind of color from this green. And then went up, went down the line. Well, obviously after I pulled them all out, I looked from this green to this ready orange. I just didn't like it. It didn't transition well at all. So I just, I cut that one out and I made this orangey yellow one. And so the four, the five of these work, right? But then as I'm, as I got all the thing, one the minis together, I put this green one in there. I'm like, oh my gosh, this all works really well. So I just decided to package them all together. So this is the Spring Fling 
six mini set and they all fit my bag so that was part of the decision making too like if they all fit in the bag they can go <laughs> if they didn't fit in the bag then the, this, the green one might have been a separate uh well then and then i thought well i could even pull off take off this dark blue one too and do that way or even maybe pull out the blue one in the middle i don't know i just it's better just to keep them all together so they all go together so spring fling mini set two left bfl minis uh, and yeah, they are in the shop right now. And these are my favorite. I love mini sets. I love mini sets. So I guess, I don't know. So perfect for shawls, like, uh, because it's a, almost, equi it's equivalent. This one's equivalent a little over a skein. So a, a fun crescent shawl, with the, uh, fading colors. Um, so you could do socks. You could do really fun socks with these. Um, uh, say no oh, the use them for like your mini blankets and stuff but 20 grams is a lot so you can you can there'll still be a lot of leftover so so those are that and then we have um okay you saw we saw sweet dreams are made of this i got those we saw tin roof rusted oh we did not see so you saw that on DK, but here is Orange Spiny Tailed Lizard um, BFL. So this one was fun. I just like the, I just, I kind of wanted to do something orangey and brown. So I just, I like the way that came out. So we got a couple skeins of that. And then what else haven't you seen? I did a solid color here. Is this it? Yeah. I did this across multiple bases. So this is deep woods. So it's a very dark green. Uh, I was trying to just kind of come up with something that would be a good complementary color to some things. Um, so let's see, what would this look good? This would look good with Dirty Leprechaun, which was a light green that I have in here. This would probably play nice with purple iris. Oh, this would play nice with purple iris, the sock set. So if you did something else with the, uh, and then didn't do socks and did something like this, this would look really nice. So I just took that green and kind of dyed it across multiple bases because I just liked it so much. So that is Deep Woods. So those are my BFL colors that are newer. So there's other things in this shop still too. You should see the mess that's here. Like... You know, you only see from this way up where it looks relatively, relatively good. All the chaos is like right here. So, let's see if I can do this without hitting the camera. Okay, so uh, what, what bin do we have here? We have Perfect Sock. So this is the uh, Merino Nylon. All my yarn is superwash. And we have, once again, Deep Woods. So this beautiful, deep, dark green. And then I did a few other solids that sort of go with that and go with other things. So this is Walnut. So really nice brown. And all these are not, they're, they're tonals. So there's little areas that will be dark. There's little areas that will be light. And each skein is, of course, uniquely different from itself or from each other so you know some of them might have a little bit more dark some might have a little more light so just be aware that they're tonals um and then we have wild raspberry which this one turned out really nice too nice real pink kind of berry color and then these three together look really good so this would make a really really pretty shawl i love that bright pop of pink with the two darker tones so those are all in perfect sock um, <clears throat> these go really nice together too. So you have, I only have two skeins of Mayhem left, but Mayhem with Walnut and Berry. Like how pretty is that? I could see like total three color Stephen West shawl with that. I do like pairing the solids with a variegated like that. So that is a really nice combination. Uh, let's see, even like something like Emerald Sea and the Berry, I like that combination that is really pretty and let's see what else do we, oh and this is this is the reason I dyed the brown I wanted something to go with 
talk to the hand. So we have the walnut, talk to the hand, and actually this berry goes well with that as well. Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> I'm like, does it? Yes, it does. But those three look really, really good together as well. So we have wild raspberry, talk to the hand, and walnut. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this this bin's really full, so because I have like multiple bases in here. We have disco lemonade. A couple skeins of that. That is on my 17 micron base. So let's move on to 17 micron. Um, Here be dragons is still available on purpose, perfect sock. The dark green go well with that as well. Okay. Loading up here. Uh, next is... Okay, so I did 17 micron. We have a few new colors on that. And we have party purple. And we have party pink. <laughs> and guess what goes together? Party purple and party pink go with... Oh my gosh, I'm losing, I'm losing yarn. Block Party. <laughs> so this is your party set. So we have Block Party, which is a fun speckled pink, purple, and black speckles on that one. And then we have Party Pink and Party Purple. And the party is falling apart here. But this one, I really love that. So it's a fun speckly, speckly one. Again, another good three color shawl there. Uh, let's see. So those were the only ones, only new ones on the 17 micron. However, I have two skeins of festival left, which party purple, party pink, festival party. Yes, please. So those would be a good set. Uh, and then we have emerald sea, which, oh, that pink and green look good. Purple and green look good. Those look good! Those all look good. So, uh, I am making a giant mess over here with yarn, but that is okay. So, that is all that's pretty much new. There's uh, still some, you know, random skeins from uh, leftovers from uh, February update or the January update. So, some Valentine colors, which. Oh, no, that is not it. I have another bin. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, that is I have my DK bin. How could I forget? So this was my perfect sock. 17 micron bin. I have a couple skeins of sparkle left as well. Which uh some of them I have some good pairings in there. So if you follow me on Instagram, I'm gonna try to share some yarn pairings in the next week or so just to Give you ideas, maybe if I can find some patterns that would work well as well, that would be helpful. So, so last but not least, the DK. DK bin, which I'm having trouble. Okay. So, uh, new DK colors are only, I only did two new DK colors, but I did Deep Woods. <laughs> oh, there. And that is the dark, dark green. And we did cobalt turquoise, which was, this was a nice, really pretty blue-green teal color. So cobalt turquoise goes well with <clears throat> emerald sea. So I pulled that blue-green color out of the emerald sea. So those is a very good combination. Um, you could even probably, probably throw that dark green in there. And that would make a really good three-color project. Um, here be dragons with the dark green, of course. We got the dark green and light green kind of going. Um, this one is actually, I really want to do, I'm really, really debating on doing something with this. So if you are interested in buying this, you need to do it now because I might steal it. So this is October Graffiti on the DK with the Deep Woods. So I have a couple skeins. I'm thinking maybe a sweater. So again, if you want this, if you want this color, you need to buy it now because it might be gone. Because I might steal it. Um, so, but yeah, those were the only new colors was the dark green and the, but what I did like was I was pairing up some colors together 
And I really liked this set. Oh, shoot. No, it's gone. It's gone. Never mind. But I can show you these two. These two look really good together. So you have the uh, Bleeding Hearts and the Tainted Love. But I had the cranberry color in there, too. So I had two skeins left of the cranberries. Where's my skein? Oh, shoot. I don't know where my skin went. But here it is. Oh, here's cranberries after dark, so pretty close. But I liked that combo, but these were gone. These are gone. But these two look nice together too. Tainted love and bleeding hearts. And if you had another just red color. I just liked the the pink and red combination. Uh, let's see. And that's it. I have one sock blank left. Uh the Green Gradient, May the Road Rise Up to Meet You on the 7525. So this gradates from a lighter green to a dark green in the center to back to a lighter green. So this will give you a nice faded green gradient. So there's one of these available. Oh, and here is the Summer Fun caked up and ready to go. So like if you purchase Summer Fun, you, it's already in a cake, ready to go. And that shows off the gradient much better from the purple to the pink to the orange or the other way around. And yeah, so hopefully I'll get a sample with that made. But let's see. I almost, I still, I like, I like that too. We got October Graffiti, Here Be Dragons, and the Dark Green, Deep Woods. So I like playing around with color pairings. And if you ever want to see what two colors will look like together, let me know. I will photograph them for you and send you whatever you're whatever you're interested in. So uh, I'll just always, you know, you can reach out and let me know whatever you like to see. Uh, I do I do take I, I don't do dye to order explicitly, but I do take requests. So if you say, hey, I really liked that color you had, I can you know generate interest and maybe dye another batch um, on my next round of. Of dying so that's it that's all I got so everything is listed right now in the store uh, sign up for my newsletter the links in the down below below I like to send out uh, coupon codes every so often to newsletter subscribers so everybody that signed up for virtual um, that day got a coupon code so that was that was fun and I don't I try to do you know monthly monthly updates roughly but uh, next month, I might take next month off. I'm not sure yet. I'm still planning Advent, so I um, need to get, it, get on the ball with that. But uh, I do want to clear some of this yarn out before I start bringing more in. So uh, we'll work on just promoting what I got for now. And yeah, so again, if you have any questions, just uh, drop, drop me a comment here. Send me an email. Find me on Instagram. Whatever. So... I appreciate all you and thank you for joining me and I hope you get to craft all the things.